welcome. Good to see you again. My name is Anklem Ullman. Our website is cwowi.eu and it stands for Church Without Walls International. We are a network of house churches and if you are interested in, in doing something like that, having faith in relationships, really getting to know the Lord, really having real heart relationship with people, go to our website. You'll find lots of teachings there and in different languages, by the way. So, okay, but today I want to talk to you about prayer. And last week I started talking about prayer, about the power of prayer and something the Lord told me some time ago that he says, never underestimate the power of prayer. So that made me go to the word and look for prayer and search more about that subject and today I want to talk to you about the prayer request we pray to the Father. Last week I explained a little bit why we have to pray because mankind uh, has the, had the authority on the earth but they gave the authority of the earth uh, to Satan actually but because mankind has the authority of the earth, the, the Lord does not have the authority here on the earth. He works by invitation and praying is actually inviting him to work on this earth that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But why do we pray to the Father? and not to Jesus. And I remember when I was young and in a teenage group in the 70s, we always prayed to Jesus. We always talked about Jesus. Never heard about praying to the Father, about asking the Father anything. The Father was, uh, yeah, I don't know. He was distant. We didn't know the Father. We only knew Jesus. We only knew G And of course, that's good. And, and I love the Lord for everything he's done. And he's still doing. But our, when it, it talks about prayer requests, prayer requests go to the Father. Jesus is the way to the Father, the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to the Father. He says actually himself in John 16, um, when he talks to his disciples about his um, that he has to leave them, but he will come back. And then he says in verse 23, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. And in the verse 26 and verse 27, he says, At that day, talking about after his resurrection again, you, uh, you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you. So he was the way to the Father, and now we can go boldly to the Father. When Jesus um, uh, rose from the dead and, you know, Mary saw him and she didn't know it was the Lord and she wanted to clung, clung unto him, he said, no, 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 don't do that yet because I'm ascending to my father and your father. So technically speaking, he, uh, our Lord Jesus, he is our big brother and his life was all about doing the will of the father. And uh, But our prayer requests go to the Father. We do not pray to the Holy Spirit. Some people do ask the Holy Spirit, invite the Holy Spirit. We do not see any prayer to the Holy Spirit in the Bible. In John 16 verse 13 it says, When he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you, guide you into all truths, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatever he hears, that shall he speak. So he shall not speak of himself. The role of the Holy Spirit is he searches the heart of the Father and communicates what the Father has for us or the will of the Father to us in our spirits. And that agrees with 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You have to go there yourself, which actually explains that the Spirit searches the heart of the Father, what he has prepared for you. And he communicates that to you. That is his role. So when we pray, we pray to the Father. Then you say, is that true? Well, let's see some examples. When you go, for instance, to Acts, let's see how the, how the, the disciples, when they prayed, how they did it. In Acts 4, the disciples, they were arrested and the elders and the scribes, they actually threatened them and they warned them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. And then it says in verse 24, oh, let's go there. There's a lot. Of, oh, I, I didn't look it up yet. I'm sorry. Acts 4, 24. That's a very familiar verse, I suppose so. It says in 23, they being let go, they went to their own. They, went, they knew where to go. They knew which people had their back, who knew how to pray. They reported all that the chief, chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Then you might say, see, Lord, that's the Lord. No, but then it says in verse 27, for truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. And then uh, again, it, it talks about um, 
um, here, verse 30, stretch out your hand, please, to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So definitely, so it, it shows you that they pray to the Father. Why? Because the Father is the source of everything. So when you need something, when you need to be strengthened, when you have a prayer request, when you want to pray for people, well, for whatever, you pray and ask the Father. Of course, you can fellowship with the Lord. No problem. I do that myself too. But when you have something that you want, what you ask for, we ask the Father. Why is that? Because he is the source of everything. When you go to the press, as Paul prayed in Ephesians 1st chapter, Verse 3, see, that is, um, that is Paul. I didn't say Peter, I mean Paul. Paul says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. So who was blessing us? It was the God and Father. Every, every time you read God, it's the Father. He blessed us with every spiritual blessing. It says, He chose us in Him. He predestined us to adoption as His Son. Wow, amazing. And then he says also in verse uh, 16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of your heart and um, of your understanding being enlightened. So he prays that the Father does it. He gives you wisdom. He gives He, he gives you uh, knowledge. And, and, and where, if, let's see, Ephesians chapter 3, what else does it say what the Father does? It, he, he prays again that the Father would grant you to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. And there's another, I won't go there, but Colossians 1st chapter, verse 12 and 13, you can also read it, that the prayers of Paul were about the Father. He prayed to the Father. Hebrews 11, 6 is a great chapter. It says, he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Uh, you might say that, okay, when you go to the Father and when you ask him something, you must believe that he exists, okay, and that he is a rewarder, that he will answer your prayers, that he is working, although you may might not see it, but the Father is at work. I remember something I read about the late Kenneth E. Hagen. He died, he went to the Lord in 2003, the same year that my mom went to the Lord. That's why I remember that. And the Lord once told Kenneth Hagen, you don't know how I long to do for my children, if they would only ask me and believe me. Often I long to help them if only they would let me, by taking me at my word, bring me their problems, trusting me to undertake for them. Wow. So oftentimes, maybe that's maybe I'm, I'm different than you are, but sometimes we pray and we do not really ex expect the Father to do something or to work. And, and when we don't see anything in the natural, we think, okay, maybe he will not do that. But that's not true. The moment we ask him, we must be sure, of course, that he exists, but that he is at work in us. Okay, so one more scripture for today. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. That's an amazing scripture. So we pray to the Father and we go to the throne of the Father. Actually, spiritually speaking, Hebrews 4, uh, verse 12, it says, The word of God is living powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrows, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And then we think, okay, that's the word, and yeah, that could be the word, but actually it's the living word. Because then it says in verse 13, there's no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Why do I, I, I mention it? Because oftentimes people, especially people who who are of faith, they think when they uh, go to the Father that they will not really tell the Father what's going on. Because, well, you, you, you have to speak faith, or faith, right? You have to speak what you want, not the, how the situation is. But here it says, okay, nothing is hidden for his, uh, uh, from his sight. All things are naked and open. So he knows everything that's going on. He even knows your deepest thoughts and so on. So why would you not be honest and, and to him? Then it says, seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Then it says in verse 16, 
offers for 15 for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin so he is our high priest that's another role of our lord he's a big brother but our high priest he knows what we go through because he had a physical body too as we have he, he knows how it is to be tempted he knows how it is to be hungry and sleepy and and whatever how about people can annoy you sometimes he knows that the father does not because he does not have a physical body so that's why jesus is our high priest and then it says because the, uh, the lord knows that how you feel and he sees everything everything is open let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need boldly that's a, what does it mean boldly it means without reservation it means full and open speech you can, you can tell the father what you want you can be full you can be honest share your heart without reservation that's amazing and it says to the throne of grace it's not a throne of cond condemnation sometimes when we do something wrong or whatever you, you feel condemned maybe that's the, by the way it's not holy spirit condemning you but we can sometimes feel ourselves condemned but it's a throne of grace the father it's not the throne of condemnation that we may obtain mercy you know the difference between mercy and grace actually there are three words and that i, I will shut up it has the word justice and that means that you get what you deserve that justice people talk about justice has to be done okay you get what you deserve mercy is not getting what you deserve okay and then there's grace grace means that you get what you do not deserve so here it says we can go to the throne of grace get what we do not deserve that we may obtain mercy maybe for our past failures or whatever not getting what we deserved he will give mercy and he will give us grace to um, find grace to help in time of need amazing next week i want to show you how the father is an oriental king how uh, we should uh, approach him what is the divine um, how would, would you say that the divine uh, protocol actually to approaching the father that's for next week. I hope it was a blessing so far. See you then. Bye-bye.